kind of not a, a practice. That's fair. My question was why, like, how can they afford to move into a house? Like, what does she do for a living that she has money? She doesn't have any support, child support. She clearly is just like a, a receptionist. Like, That's how does she good. have all this money to move? And then she moved into like this house and this seems like a pretty decent house. Yeah. And it's supposed to be in the Boston area, which I didn't even realize. Oh, that. they filmed in Pawtucket. Yeah, it was it's in like, Ipswich. So like, funny. Yeah, I, I never realized yeah. that it was kind of... I must have at the time. But yeah. I forgot. Um, but like... what? A, That's a good point. I didn't I didn't catch that. But yeah, I mean, the money thing is an interesting yeah. uh, question. I One thing I liked about the house, this is so stupid, but I it brought me joy, was there... The, <laughs> There's a slope in front of the house, and it's minor. Do you remember this? No. Like, so it's minor, but like they, whenever they get out of the car, there's this little tiny slope they have to walk into and out of. It's very minor, <laughs> but it it was just this one more little like hurdle that they have to get through. Yeah. And to me, I was like, that's such a weird little detail. And they, there's a lot of uh, scenes in the movie where they show Cher and Winona and the whole cast like walking in and out of that front door. And I'm like, there has to be meaning to this. There has yeah. to be meaning to this like slope in the front there yard. There's a lot of scenes. That it's way, a little yeah. strange. And um, but I don't, and I don't quite get it. But um, it was just like this to me. It was like, yeah, this is their house. So maybe, they're, maybe they're, the filmmakers are trying to make this house more of a character. Like, no, this will be the house where they stay for a long sure. time. I don't know. It was just weird. And I, like, and it just seemed to add to the frustration of the drama. Like, any, the, the fighting that happens in the front yard, mm -hmm. if you watch this again, um, you'll notice the slope. Because I think it actually added to the drama. And it's, such a, it's again, minor. I wrote it down, and it's something that stick, stuck out at me. Um, and... Yeah, but that was that. I think I'm trying to think of what else, like really, that I jumped out. Oh, the char the Cher character when she says things like, and I think this is a, lot, a testament to, to her acting, to Cher's acting, is that you are just with her. Like even mm -hmm. though she's wrong, you're like, yeah, I get it. Because like she'll say, Winona Ryder's character says, you know, you just keep just keep running away, Mal. You just keep running away, and she says, I don't run away and move on. Mm -hmm. And I'm like. I'm with you, girl. Like I yeah. get, like I get it. Even though, guess what? She's actually sort of the villain in the movie. Right. She won't sit still long enough for her kids to have a real, um, you know, relationship. And right. uh, even with her, really. Yeah. So, um, so I think that's. I really like that idea, and I like this idea of like. And I think then, when I watched the movie back, when I was, it was as bored as I was, like I was like, oh no, no, Winona is right. But now as an adult, I'm like. I um I kind of see Cher's side. Like you don't have to like if drama is presenting itself, and you, and I feel like that's kind of a a message of the of this past five years is like if there's drama, like you just separate yourself from the drama, and right. if that means leaving your city, moving out of your house, leaving your situation, and that's what you do. Sure. And I feel like Cher's sensibilities now are more in line to our culture now. Do you agree? Yeah, I think so. But, I mean, I will say, like, I didn't feel like I related to either one of them back then because mm -hmm. I felt like her, I, I still feel like the, her, Winona's character was just so odd. Yeah. Like, it wasn't relatable, relatable at all. Mm -hmm. like, but I do, what I mean is the frustration and, of, like, having a parent that keeps dragging you around, but, that's tough. Right. Yeah. So, but, and also, um, and yeah, I, I yeah, I mean, it, it's it's got to be tough, but I don't think I ever saw it that way. When, um when I watched it the first time, I don't think I ever felt it like the moving around part of it too much. I think I was just distracted by the weirdness of the whole movie, to be honest. Um, and the thing with, with Cher too, with her character, with Rachel, you know, she always has good intentions in her choices. Now the moving from place to place, um, yeah, it's very selfish reasons. But I think everything else that she does, I think, comes from the heart. It comes from a good place when she's making the choices that she's making. Because, I mean, it's tough. It's tough being a mom. Mm -hmm. and doing but what are the things. reasons? I think, well, like when she's talking to, um, I don't have, I'm going to, I'm not even going to try to do this to be honest. But I feel like she. 
Yeah. Well, because it seems like she hooks up with her boss and they have to move. Right. But like, and that's, I'm like, is that really the only reason? And Right. And that's what I mean. When she yeah. moves, it's a very selfish, selfish yeah. reason. So, yeah. Right. Okay. Because she just, she, that's what she does. And, and we don't know the whole story behind it, right? We yeah. Don't, we well, I thought you just said she moves for good intentions. No, I mean, her parenting, her choices for her parent, parent oh, okay. choices right. are her, um, are done with, you know, good intentions. Mm-hmm. Not, no, I said before that when she moves, it's for selfish reasons. But with her parenting choices, it's, um, it's, what's that? Oh, what that sound? Is that shorty? No, that's the t- uh, the bathroom. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and I so going back to I totally forgot uh, the first time around. I completely forgot the whole part where Winona Ryder is like faking her identity because she's like she's starving herself. She goes to the Connecticut house to like to get to be with like a wholesome, complete yeah, it was weird. family. And how did they get in touch with? Um, well, he looked at the license plate. Wasn't the oh, was it the license scene? plate? I think, no, yeah, okay, he tracked okay. him down somehow. I couldn't figure that one out. Um, super weird, and this is maybe revealing how dumb it might be. Like, is it is it possible? It is not possible to get pregnant from kissing. No, the, no, no, no. The um, the car. So he, Bob Hoskins shows up. I, I don't remember any of the characters' names, but he shows up. To pick up an owner rider in Connecticut right. with a car. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, and the whole thing, I'm like, wait, how do you get the car back? And he attaches the car to his car. Yeah, he tows it somehow. Is, I think is it's that possible real? if you have a powerful enough. Well, car. sure, but I don't feel like his car was the same. Yeah, car. it didn't. Yeah, it's, there was probably a little bit of, of movie magic. Yeah. I yeah. Think so. And I don't, I don't even know why Sherry sure didn't go. Maybe she was too upset. She was pissed. She was pissed. All right. Don't even look at me right now. Um, I did love the scene where, in it's a very, it's definitely the Cher Oscar moment, although she wasn't nominated or anything for anything for this, but when she's at the hospital bed. So we have the... the although so somebody she, was nominated. Winona. Yeah. Winona for a Golden, golden Globe. Oh, well, it's for right, supporting. Golden Globe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, and she's at the hospital bed, and she is, again, like just very natural, and she's like, and when you were little, you know, and like, and it's like very, very yeah. sad, and like, she does like voice cracking, and it's just a beautiful thing. Yeah, it's a great scene. And I think her other really good scene is at the end with Winona, and she has this little line, and I wrote it down about the wedding photos and how they didn't come out, and that mm-hmm. she should have known that the that something was wrong with I don't remember her. that at all. Oh my God, really? Funny. And then she says it so casually, but she says it like she's truly telling a story she's an amazing actress you love her she, i really love her i do but that's a really good scene do you yes. remember that though i don't remember that scene that's funny. she's she's talking about her she's talking about her writer says that to the, she slaps her in the face and which really quick the whole trailer that trailer is about the slap in the face this trailer for this movie and that slap happens like eight minutes before the movie ends so and she's like I, I hate when they fucking trailers do that yeah but um so, yeah, so she slaps him in the face, and they sit down, they're talking, and she says, you know, your dad, blah, 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 and the whole thing, and your dad never basically left, and, you know, he He's never... He's not coming back. Oh, yeah, I saw you when you were four years old, and she's like, you know, your dad wasn't a good guy, and she's like, I, you know, remember when our wedding photos didn't turn out, and, but she's just telling this little tiny story. It's like two sentences, and, but it's just a really nice, uh scene hmm. um and then continue, continuing with the ending um the dance scene in the kitchen can, what, what were your thoughts on that so i remember <laughs> thinking about it in that i liked it but it was because i thought that was the movie like i thought the movie was supposed to be this light-hearted romantic comedy whatever and that was all part of it. And I was like, oh, good. So she didn't die. Let's go back to some happiness. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was cute. I, I thought it was a cute scene. You didn't yeah. like it? Well, the song, it's like, never make a pretty woman your wife. Oh, yeah. That, it's well, a that song. Just a little yeah, bit. It's, like, it's a little, it's just a strange. Because I was it's, like, well, what I was, you know, what's so funny when I thought back, I thought it was the Shoop Shoop song because that's right, in that the was, song. Right. It's in the movie right. at the beginning, the very beginning. Um, but I guess it's just, I guess it was probably a popular song at that time. And maybe they're supposed to have been listening to the radio. So I don't know. Maybe they just chose that because of, of that. Hmm. Who knows? So let's talk about Joe. 
I remember Joe being cuter. I remember him being cuter too, but he was weird. Like he was so another weird. weird thing. Well, also too, um, why? Like she finds Shira finds out he's twenty. 26. Her daughter is 15. 15. And she's like, so, Joe. Joe seems possible. And it's like, he is almost 10 years I definitely think that speaks to her misjudgment of men in general. Okay. I do. I I I think, I want to say it was an intentional thing. Oh. Maybe it wasn't, but I'm looking at her and I'm like, I believe that she would want to push her onto Joe. Wow. I do. I really feel like as that character would would be like, oh, he's a good catch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that I think I'll make out with. Later. Well, I don't. But anyways, um, no, I wait. I disagree. I think like first of all, then it was the New Year's thing, New Year's kiss. She's just gotten. She was getting freaked out because of what's his face Hoskins, wanting to have yeah. a commitment. Yeah. And it was her way of just feeling like I'm. I'm not committed. I can do what I want. In that kiss, I remember it being much more scandalous younger. But now I'm like, that's like barely a kiss. It was just a, it yeah. was like just a kiss. I mean, like that's not a big deal. But did you feel like? I mean, come on, Joe was a weird guy. He. he was, this is the problem with this world. One of them is like because he's cute. Like he's just. He's okay. Like, meaning his weirdness is overridden by the fact that he's attractive. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I'm going to go quickly go into, like, remember the notebook? You said, did you see the notebook? I did, yeah. He is, and I think this, I'm sure, is, this, I'm not the first person to say this, but, like, I felt this way seeing this movie where I said to Carl right after, I was like, he is stalking her. If he didn't look like Ryan Gosling. Mm-hmm. She'd call the cops. Yeah. Like, he is flat out stalking this girl. And this is something similar. It's like, he is 10 years older than this teenage girl. He is a total weirdo. He is ringing the bell for reckless. no reason. And he's a reckless. Living alone. And, what does he even do? Yeah. And it he seems, works at a convent? It also seems like he has had relationships with these older women in town. Well, he too. had a woman. He had a relationship. And the girl left Oh, the girl left that. Town. That's another. That's a whole other thing. It was some sort thing. of weird scandal. But nobody really knows, like, his background. Right. Everybody so thinks he he's is cute. a genuine, strange person. Total strange, weird person. Stranger. However, yeah. I don't feel like... So I didn't feel like he was the aggressor at all. Like she was no, the she one. No, she forced him. No, she, every, every he, time. I don't think he ever wanted to even take her fishing, and she kind of forced herself into that situation. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like every time they were together, he had this like uneasiness to him, which was fine. However, when she went up to him and starts making out with him, I mean that was skeevy. Yeah, that was really, really skeevy. Yeah, it does like, not age. Well. Where is him? Where is he saying? No. Well, wait. So you're talking about the JFK scene after JFK dies? Oh, God. That was... Forgot about that one, too. Yes. That was disgusting, too. Like, that was a weird scene. I feel like we've seen that scene before, too, where, like, the emotions overwhelm someone with something, like... Uh, that is something that is not imperative to the story. Yeah. It was just a plot device, I think, to get them both super emotional. Um, I do like that scene, though, to the movie's credit. I actually liked the way that played out. I liked that it was awkward, where, like, it's during a film of in a classroom, and the, I, I thought the movie did a good job capturing oh, as far as that Capturing that, that moment, moment. Yeah. yes, because that was true. I mean, when you think talk about, like, your parents and yeah. stuff, or talk about, well, oh, where were you? And, that's right. Well, it reminds me of the Challenger explosion, because yes. I was in 7th sure. or 8th, I can't remember. But it was in the middle. What? You can't remember? You just said it. You compared it to. No, I, mean, <laughs> I think it was eighth. I think it was eighth. But like, mm-hmm. what I'm saying is, I remember being in the class in junior high in the yeah. classroom, and then in the classroom interrupted, and this seriously, this girl running and yelling, the spatial blew up. Yeah. Uh, not a teacher. I was a student. But like, um, yeah. All that to say, um, yeah, just wrong, just wrong, wrong. And gross, and strange, wrong, and wrong, also wrong. just like, also, I feel like an. Any other movie where there'd be a character that works at a convent as a bell ringer, um, I feel like that would be like the town weirdo. But because the only, person, the he's only cute, other one I know of is Quasimodo. Okay. That's the only one. <laughs> so you can see him making out with yeah. Him. But all that to say, I think. Um, but I think that's that is always the a problem with um, our uh, the world we live in. Is like, well, wait. He's he's cute though. Like I mean, it's like it's like. But he wasn't it, even that cute. I mean, I understand. We remember him he, cuter. I remembered him. I remember him a lot. I was cuter. very happy to see him in that movie. I remember thinking, "Oh, good, he got a job after Sixteen <laughs> Candles," because I really liked him in Sixteen Candles. Yeah. 
And I was like, oh, good, I got a job. And then it was like, oh, that wasn't a great job.